Review Starlight is the first anime I've finished in probably years, and there's one major reason I was captivated. It took a few episodes, but a certain sequence completely sold me on it, and it ended up deciding my best girl, too. And now looking back on it, there's so much depth to all the storytelling choices and characters, so I'm going to overanalyze the heck out of this episode, the review, and the girl that made me love this show. Spoilers abound, by the way. Review Starlight is a show about a group of girls who go to a performing arts type school and put on a play every year called Starlight. And they also end up battling each other in a tournament set to music that drives conflict and development, and it's... complicated. This whole thing probably won't make much sense if you haven't seen the show. So anyway, what about Mahiru? Mahiru is introduced to us in episode 1, and it's pretty clear that she has a bit of an obsession with her friend Karin. And when Karin's childhood friend Hikari shows up, Mahiru starts to get very jealous that Karin is ignoring her. As the first few episodes go on, it gets worse and worse, and Mahiru even starts acting kind of creepy, holding Karin's sweaty towel from practice longingly. And at this point, she was my worst girl. She pretty much was from the moment it seemed she was obsessed with Karin, and it only got worse as the first few episodes of the show went on. Except the hallway goddess scene. That was amazing. But then episode 5 comes around, and we start to get some background. There's a bit of backstory and foreshadowing in the episode leading up to her review. It starts with her and Karin before their first production of Starlight. Mahiru is nervous, and Karin comforts her, and Mahiru sees glittering shards around Karin, a major motif of this episode, and it shows how Mahiru sees the shine of the other girl. This is where Mahiru's love for Karin began. And later we're shown a young Mahiru learning baton, and shown how proud her mother and the rest of her large family are of her. She's the oldest sibling, and she does her best for everyone. But even young Mahiru tends to rely on others to drive her rather than herself. She only applied to the school at her grandmother's suggestion, and she's never been very confident. Back in the present, Mahiru gets a shipment of vegetables from her family's farm, and decides to prepare a meal for all her friends. Along with the vegetables, her grandmother sent a recording of an interview Mahiru did when she was young. She starts to watch the video and we see a young Mihiru being interviewed in front of her old school. She's asked about her baton skills and her plans for the future. But then present Mihiru shuts the TV off, right before her younger self can answer the question, what kind of star do you want to be? Anyway, skipping ahead a bit, later she lashes out at Hikari, which is actually a good moment for her. It shows her it's less of a pushover than she seemed, despite her blaming Hikari for something that obviously Hikari's not at fault for. Hikari is, of course, cold and reasonable in her response, but then Mahiru's phone chimes and we get to the review. Since they were just in the same scene together, I was anticipating that Mihiru was going to fight Hikari to try to win Karin's love or something, but she was pitted against Karin herself. As soon as I saw it was titled The Review of Jealousy, I got excited. I always get excited about jealousy as a theme for some reason. And then she started monologuing, reenacting her and Karin's meeting at the beginning of their friendship. And she sounded unhinged a bit and kind of angry and mocking of Karin. And I was kind of into that. I was excited for Karin to fight her and to see the show acknowledge Mahiru's behavior. But more than that, I found myself downright entertained by this character, the most entertained I had been through the entirety of the show so far, and by my least favorite girl. The background music was lighter and jazzier than any of the other reviews so far, but with a bit of a chaotic feeling behind it. And then the lyrics and the fight itself started. The way Mahiru's harsh words conflicted with the fun music gave her a whole new vibe. She was no longer a timid girl who just swooned over Karin all day. She was powerful, and she was angry, and she was ready to fight the object of her affections and anyone who stood in her way. And Karin wasn't about to just stand there and take it because they were friends. She started running. The show wasn't treating Mahiru with sympathy, they were acknowledging she was in the wrong. Mahiru chases Karin until she's cornered against a wall opposite Hikari. Karin then calls out for Hikari, and Mahiru gets upset. Go back to how you were, to the Karen-chan you were before Kagura-san got here. Oversleep, and be late. Just let me be useful to you again. While wanting to be useful is a sympathetic and relatable trait, this just digs Mahiru deeper into being a bad friend to Karen. She wants Karen to undo all the work she's put in. She wants Karen to regress and let go of her own new happiness and drive. And at this point, I was still worried she was going to give in, that the show was going to reward all of Mahiru's behavior, just because her reasons were sympathetic. But it doesn't excuse what she's done. Then Karin turns her down. Karin restates her determination to succeed. For Hikari. As the song climaxes, Mahiru asks Karin if she doesn't need her anymore. I have nothing. Without your shine, Karin-chan, I can't do anything. At this point, I was absolutely sold on the show. For them to create a character who is no more than her crush, and then have the character herself be aware of it, I was so excited. They were deconstructing my absolute least favorite type of character. 
And then instead of giving in and relying on Mahiru again, Karin starts to compliment her, to tell her she is something without Karin's reliance. She shines on stage, and she couldn't have even made it to the audition if she didn't have drive of her own. She's warm and kind and has an enthusiasm when she's on stage. Mahiru has a flashback to her family that encouraged and believed in her, and to herself as a child, proud of her skill and accomplishments with the baton. She's reminded of who she herself is, and suddenly Mahiru is a proper character. This whole time, Mahiru had forgotten how talented she was and how she loved the stage, singing, and baton, because she was back to square one and everyone around her was just as sparkling. She and Karen then have one final showdown, but this time it's a fair fight as equals, and Karen earns the first point in their game. Immediately after the review, we see Mahiru, for the first time, being happy while being alone. It's a strong moment showing how she's comfortable with who she is now, and she doesn't have to rely on anyone. Then Nana comes in and tells her the potatoes are ready, and she goes to the table to see all of her friends smiling and thanking her for the food. This way we get a moment of her being content to be alone, and a moment of her appreciating being with all of her friends, the first time she really shows affection for anyone other than Karin. And she isn't even unhappy that Hikari is there. It's a beautiful moment of growth for her. There's also a shot of her smiling face when Tendo Maya says the potatoes have a full-bodied flavor behind a simple facade, which also alludes to how the show is now revealing the more well-rounded sides of Mihiru's personality, after purposely keeping her one note before. And then we see Karen watching the very same interview from earlier in the episode. Mihiru gets embarrassed, but doesn't turn it off before we see the answer to, what kind of star do you want to be? I want to... I want to be a kind of star that can make the people important to her smile. And with that, we know the reason Mahiru worked so hard before she had Karen. And we end on a shot of Mahiru that mirrors when she first saw Karen in those glittering shards, but the shine is coming from her. As she thinks to herself how much she loves this moment with her friends, but will never rely on anyone for her self-worth again. I just absolutely love this episode, to take the crush character with no traits archetype and use that to build a character who depends on others for her self-worth is brilliant, and the resolution is really fulfilling. They turn Mahiru into a sympathetic character rather than one who's annoyingly unrealistic, and by the end they've revealed everything about her that they've purposely hidden. She goes from a flat character with no motivation to having a full arc, traits of her own, and a motivation other than Karen in the span of 20 minutes. And she's a major player in my favorite sequence in the entire anime, and possibly one of my favorite sequences in any anime. They've managed to take the relatable and sympathetic traits of jealousy and unrequited love that are so easy to ruin, lead me to believe they're going to do a bad job with her character, only to deconstruct and make these major strengths of her character. And we see her get over it. While unrequited love characters are pet peeves of mine, if they do get over it and are well-rounded beyond that, they're often my favorites. And Mahiru led me to believe she'd be the bad kind, only to end up the good kind. A character who is insecure, finding it within themselves to be confident and have self-worth is one of my favorite types of arcs, and it makes me really happy to see Mahiru grow so much and end up so happy. Part 2, I guess. Review symbolism or something. That sounds kind of pretentious. I don't know. Part 2, I'm going to talk about the review and overanalyze it, I guess. So I skimmed over the first part of the review since I wanted to explain my excitement when watching it for the first time. So before I get to major theme things, I want to touch on a few things that I skipped. The glittering shards that are so prevalent throughout this episode make an appearance at the beginning as part of Mahiru's reenactment of that moment with Karin from the beginning of the episode. And Mahiru starts to shower the real, non-cardboard cutout Karin with these shards from on stage. It's a nice visual representation of how Mahiru is projecting this shine and idolization onto Karin. The shards don't represent Karin's shine, they represent Mahiru's and how she can't see her own value anymore, so she relies on Karin for it. This happens after, it's what I want and what I can't have, referring to both reenactment Karen promising to stay with her forever, and that shine. She not only idolizes and wants Karen, she wants to shine. Then there's the puppet reenactment itself. Of course it shows us the difference between the real event we saw earlier and the way Mahiru sees things, but the little puppet cutouts remain for most of the review. They're a smaller, orchestrated version of what's happening. Even puppet Karen looks just as afraid as real Karen as things go on and they reinforce how flimsy and false Mahiru's projections are, as if everything could come crashing down around her as it does in the climax. The whole stage is decorated this way, with 2D cutouts of Karen, Mahiru, and the school. And that cat, I think, that tends to represent Mahiru. The review is styled after a baseball game, which is kind of an interesting choice. The innings are a good way to show how the fight keeps going and neither of them make any progress until the bottom of the ninth. 
and the repeated use of some shots and animation gives it an even more round-and-round -round feeling as their movements in the innings repeat. Then at the bottom of the ninth inning, the girls each take a base and have their first proper fight on the same ground slash the actual baseball diamond. Mahiru uses a mace as her signature weapon, and she tends to hit things with it like it's a baseball bat in this sequence, too. The lyrics allude to the baseball theming as well, with a swing and a miss and references to a game. But the most telling reason for the baseball game choice comes from the title of the song, Koi no Makyu. Makyu can mean magic ball. Q slash ball is commonly used for baseball, so it ends up being magic baseball, sorta. Ma has connotations of demon, spirit, or evil influence, but usually is just magic. The English translation I see the most seems to be magical pitch of love, and the pitch imagery works well, of course, with Mahiru's attempt to get Karen to agree to go back to the way they were. My favorite translation, though, is love's wicked pitch, just because I like the wicked connotations. It's also a little shorter and sharper and easier to say. This section's really short, but I do just want to talk about Mahiru's mace. I just like that it's Mahiru's signature weapon and kind of doubles as a baseball bat, and it ties into her baton talents. She uses it really similarly, and since she's trained in baton since age six, no wonder she's so strong when she tries. I don't really have a super deep analysis, I just think it's cute and nice that they tied it in. And now here we get to like actual main plot stuff. The song repeatedly uses mawaru mawaru, or round and round, and refers to the game never ending, which, which seems like mild foreshadowing for the reveal in episode 7, which is cool. And Mahiru telling Hikari that something is wrong, and it isn't supposed to be like this, takes on a different meaning once it's revealed that it has more literal meaning too. It's not just that Mahiru feels it's wrong, it's that Nana has lived this so many times over and it has never happened like this before. During the review, Nana herself is the only girl not seen, and her stage is never seen, adding another hint that she isn't quite like the rest of the girls. And the lyrics, and Mahiru herself, want things to stay the same way as before, so she ties into Nana's desires that way. Nana's repeating review was holding everyone back from their growth until Karen was inspired by Hikari to break the cycle. This review's theme of staying the same is like a microcosm of the larger story, which, in itself, is starlight. Everything is so meta. What's happening? Cotton's verse in the song starts with, I'll go running straight forward, so she's breaking the round and round cycle. Surely, right ahead, we will both become stars, since she has to break the cycle for anyone to grow, not only herself, but for Mahidu to let go of her obsession and to realize her own worth. At the end, everyone's roles as one of the goddesses in Starlight are revealed. Mahidu is the goddess of jealousy, of course, finally freed from the goddess's punishment, just as Mahidu herself has become so much more once she was freed from her reliance on Karen. Another thing I enjoy is that once we get more of Karen and Hikari's relationship, it's revealed Hikari never returned Karen's letters because she didn't want Karen to rely on her for her shine, and it's a nice parallel to Mahiru's over-reliance on Karen. Hikari and Karen's relationship mirrors Karen and Mahiru's in a few ways, but Hikari was able to realize the trouble that would come if Karen got too obsessed and reliant on her. This is also apparent in a section of the lyrics that I'll get to in a bit, but I really love the parallels of Mahiru to Karen and Karen to Hikari. The way Hikari leaving caused Karen to be more self-reliant really keeps her from becoming like Mahiru was before. Although the biggest, most important difference is that Hikari inspires Karen to become better, while Karen makes Mahiru want to stay the same and not let Karen grow. Though after the review, Mahiru herself becomes more like Karen, inspired to do her best and change for herself. Alright, before I get into the lyrics, I want to mention Mahiru's name. I don't have in-depth Japanese name knowledge or anything, but from what I can find, Mahiru means midday or broad daylight. The song uses her name a couple times in the lyrics. This probably wasn't as intentional when choosing her name, but Mihiru is part of the word for daydream, Mihiru no Yume, which is awfully fitting since she has the unattainable dream of being with Karen. Suyuzaki gave me a bit more trouble looking for meanings though, so I don't have anything to conclude for that. Okay, finally getting to the song itself, it's so catchy and I love it. This is my favorite review song. The song and the sequence and Mahiru all work together to make me love the scene and her. So I am biased, but I'm also biased towards Mahiru because I love the song. It stands out from the other songs, which tend to have a slower or more intense, epic feel, which I also love. But this song was such a surprise after the Tendo Maya review. And uh, speaking of, not to go off topic or anything, but Tendo Maya's song seems like pretty straightforward and fitting for her, but then there's just like a sweet guitar solo for some reason. And not that I don't love it, but it's been haunting me for months. What does it mean? What does it tell us about Tendo Maya? If anyone knows what's up with that, please tell me. I love it, but I, I feel like there's got to be some deep significance. 
Maybe there's not. Maybe it's just a sick guitar solo. Anyway, I thought Koi no Maki was really exciting and refreshing. So I've mentioned a lot of the lyrics already, but there are a few others I want to highlight. There's Karen talking about being reborn, which is a major theme of her in the show. Not long after that, Mahiru asks Karen if she remembers that day, meaning the day Mahiru fell for Karen. Karen says she remembers that day, but Karen's lines seem to allude more to remembering her promise with Hikari than to remembering the day she helped Mahiru. Next, they start to sing back and forth. We give our all and we clash. This is our first time doing this, right? And I think that's really important for their relationship, too. Mihiru has to stop doing everything for Karen and confront her and give her all for them to grow. A lot of friendships get stronger after going through a fight, much like they're doing here, but of course, this is a literal battle. The next part is Mahiru asking who changed Karen, singing, Hey, look only at me. See, there's a small light. Light, of course, being Hikari in Japanese, and that will disappear come midday, which is Mahiru. But once Mahiru has her moment of realization, she and Karen sing and sink for the first time. Another use of midday slash Mahiru, but this time Mahiru's midday brings the sun that shines, helping the grass to grow, implying how Mahiru herself has grown due to her own shine. Then they face each other on fair footing for the final inning. Let's continue with this game, and in the end, Karin gets the final word to reinforce her win. Anyway, final little like epilogue part of this video. After episode 5, Mahiru's out of the spotlight quite a bit. But we see her take on a more caring, big sister type role, fitting with the reveal of her being the oldest of a large family. She's back to her warm, kind, enthusiastic self. She also continues to be shown happy alone, and even kicks Karen and Hikari out of their shared room so she can clean up and prepare herself for the final reviews. It's a pretty big moment for her, not only showing how she's comfortable in herself, but also that she isn't jealous or worried about Karen and Hikari being alone together anymore. When Hikari goes missing, Mahiru works hard to help Karen find. Later, when everyone's eating together, she remembers Hikari's specific tastes and reminds them not to put tofu in her meal. She's caring and perceptive and a really good friend from episode 5 onwards, and it's really wonderful to see. I'm hoping that the review Starlight Game will keep her like this, but I don't know enough about the plot to know if she'll be pre- or post-development. When will her 4-star come home so I can actually start playing? <laughs>